Article 43, on petition of Michael Pierce, Mary Louise Woolsey, and at least 25 other registered voters, shall we adopt to the provisions of RSA 4014-B to delegate the determination of the default budget to the Municipal Budget Committee, which has been adopted under RSA 30 colon 14, majority vote required, not recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 4-0. Um, I understand there's a need for a... Um, a correction um, through no fault of the petitioners. I think the way the article was typed um, needs to be addressed. Um, shall we adopt two? Needs, the two needs to come out and then a proper reference um, to the RSA number. Um, I believe the petitioners presented this accurately and, and in the translation it, it, it got um, misadjusted. So all those in favor of, um, I'm going to ask Ms. Woolsey to make that amendment, also, also Mr. Moved. Pluff to second it. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor of that housekeeping um, motion, raise your voter cards. Thank you. Down cards. Um, any opposed? All right. The Woolsey amendment to Article 43. Um, has uh, passed, and I'll let Ms. Uh, Woolsey speak to um, Article 43 as amended. Yes, very, very briefly. We had a problem with the way the default budget was constructed by the town this year, and there are individuals on any budget committee who are uh, accurate and adept at uh, mathematics, so we thought it might be a good idea to let the budget committee members perhaps try to uh, construct the default budget in the future understanding that the default budget is critical to the way you make your decision when you go to vote. If the default budget figure is lower, you probably would vote no on the uh, money or on the uh, amount of money in the uh, operating budget. And if it's higher, then you'll probably vote yes on the operating budget. So we need an exact figure here. Thank you, Ms. Woolsey. Mr. Jones. A couple of uh, technical questions, if I might, Mr. Moderator. Um, it's my understanding that um, according to this uh, RSA, uh, the vote to adopt the question shall conform with RSA 40, colon 14, Roman 6. Instead of B? Well, that's what it says. In, uh, I, I just printed it out last night. Yeah, I got a copy of it. Let me... Uh... Or is it colon 40, 40 colon 14, Roman 6? All right, let's take a look at that. That's it there. Yeah, that's defined in B, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, if you reference uh, Roman 6, it says, it's a, it's a little confusing, although it first appears clear, <laughs> like a lot of laws. Yeah. It says, if a three-fifths majority, so while it's our present presentation says a majority vote required, Roman 6 says a 60% majority is required. Um, I know that is not, was not in the petition, uh, but it, it, I think it ought best be resolved now. Yes. Uh, but further, Ms., Mr. Moderator, I'll point out the rest of that sentence also reads, uh, a majority of those voting on the question vote yes, RSA 40 colon 13, shall apply. So it's cross it's cross referencing to a different RSA. So I'm not sure whether this applies, although there is an explicit reference to it. There's an explicit dereference as well. <laughs> yeah. So the issue in, in this may not be the moment to um, to rule on it. It may take Mr. Gerald some study, but the point has raised and uh, I understand the petitioners didn't include majority vote required, but the issue is what um, what type of vote is required to shift uh, development of the um, or calculation of the default budget to the budget committee. Is it majority yeah. or is it three-fifths? So that's point correct. well taken and and um, I, I know the town will uh, will need to look at that and uh, get us an answer before those ballots are printed so that we can alert the voters whether it's a three-fifths or a majority. Thank you. Um, and the other, the other point was that uh, um, this RSA also requires that the governing body, which is, of course, the Board of Selectmen, uh, hold a public hearing on this matter. And uh, it has to take place no later than 30 days, no more than 30 days prior to the election, so and, that, and not, not less than 15 days. And it requires a seven-day notice. 
Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at, we need to have, uh, your notice needs, to, the Board of Selectmen's notice needs to go out within the next week or so. Okay. Uh, or this becomes potentially an invalid petition because of that duty not being performed. So I wanted to highlight that to be sure that we're that gets all, done. all aware of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Now all if right. I may proceed on the... Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, you notice how I have to turn around, by the way, because, you know, the power has shifted in this town so much that we're now speaking to them as if it were their meeting, when in fact it's our meeting and we should be facing each other. The camera shouldn't dictate us in terms of the, uh, the uh, nature of the, uh, the meeting. The meeting is a legislative body and we are all legislators here. I am, I am in support of this Warren article, even though it would appear that I'm not, but because I'm highlighting the three-fifths requirement possibility. And that's because I'm about process more than anything else, even if it doesn't support my own position. Um, so my apologies, Mary Louise, if that's a, you know, a problem. So, um, and, and to reference my earlier comment, uh, yeah, you could easily see this as kind of a power grab. You know, a bunch of committee grabbed the power now. Um, but I see it as a power restoration. The default budget is kind of a, a weird concept born 20 years ago when, when, the, um, SB, when we became an SB2 town. The, SB, the default budget never existed before that. We used to come before a body like this and argue all day if necessary before we came up with a number. But because of SB2 having to go to a ballot, we couldn't, there was no form in which you could argue to a conclusion. So there had to be a yes and no question, thus the creation of the default budget. And when they created SB2, there was no provision for the budget committee to handle the default budget. That was until about 12 years ago, 2004, when the legislative, uh, the state legislature um, saw the error in their way and granted towns the ability to give the budget committee uh, the authority to handle budgets. So right now we're running on one leg, half of the budget warrant article. We'd like to run on two, it makes sense. I have a lot more to say on this. I'm not going to say today, don't applause, because we have a public hearing coming in which I have much to say on the topic. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Zanoy. Yeah. Um, uh, Jerry Zanoy again, Presidential Circle. I'm glad the day is coming to an end. I like this article. I'm in favor of it. I, I sat on the Budget Committee for three years. And but the default budget is really supposed to be last year's budget, except contractual requirements that have that are in that are in that have been accepted, uh, and uh, in previous years like raises to police, fire, whatever those things, three percent a year would have to apply. And what I have found in looking at the default budget uh, while on the budget committee has been some overly there's been some over. Uh, uh, interpretations of what is contractual and what isn't. And uh, that's why uh, people can sit in here at times and say, gee, we keep voting down the budget, but it keeps rising, you know? Well, if you get, a, you know, if you have aggressive people and with and interpreting what's contractual, and when it's not contractual, you're going to get that. So I'm in favor of this. And, um, you know, again, we'd have to work with, with the board and go over some of the items that we think are not perhaps correct and have some discussion and hopefully reconciliation. If not, well, then we still have to do what we think is right if I'm on the budget committee, <coughs> which I'm not at the moment. Uh, so I like this article. It does give the budget committee an opportunity to reflect as accurate as they can uh, what the default is. And so if the operating budget isn't passed, we fall to a budget, default budget, that we think is on target. There's been some aggressive over-interpretations of contractual. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zanoy. Mr. Bridal. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Nick Bridal, 225 Toll Farm Road. There seems to be a couple of distinct subsets of thinking in today's deliberative session. I'm going to get you right on 
Just 43, though, next yep. year. Yep, and, 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 and that's what I'm here to talk about. Okay. The 43 is very specific to the transfer of, uh, or the delegation of power to the budget committee. And we've heard earlier today about uh, power being shifted back and forth. Um, the power of this obligation lies in our elected officials. Uh, it is the duty of our elected officials. Um, I would not support this article. I believe it is the duty of the Board of Selectmen to determine the default budget and use that. I charge the Board of Selectmen to be steadfast in their duties. The air of concern of the, whether the Budget Committee should have this delegated to them as the authority uh, in coordination with abolishing the Budget Committee, there is too much muddy in the waters right now. Uh, and I would say it's the duty of the Board of Selectmen to maintain control of the default budget, and I would charge them to do so. And if I have a further opinion, I would be more than happy to come into the public comment section of a Board of Selectmen meeting and address my concerns with them directly. So I'm not in support of this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Um, Mr. Rice. Flipping there. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. Um, I have kind of a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask Mr. Motter if you could have somebody on the Board of Selectmen uh, explain in a succinct manner so that the rest of the town knows what the heck this article is about. What is the determination of the default budget? Is it just the addition and subtraction of the contractual items and from last year? That's a simple math deal. Is that what it is or is there something more to it? Uh, I'm going to cut you off right there. It's set out in statute and I know Mr. Gerald Ger could, could read it to us. but. It's uh, the default budget is defined in the statute, and at present, uh, the Board of Selectmen is charged with calculating that number and inserting it into the budget article. Subsequently, there was an amendment which allowed that authority to calculate the default budget per the language in the statute. Um, you have the opportunity to have the Budget Committee do it. So really, our question in Article 43 is who should do it in accordance with the terms of the statute? Do you have that, Mr. Gerald, the, what the definition of the default budget is? Could you read that for Mr. Rice? Uh, yes. Uh, default budget as used in this subdivision means the amount of the same appropriations as contained in the operating budget authorized for the previous year reduced and increased, as the case may be, by debt service, contracts, and other obligations previously incurred or mandated by law and reduced by one-time expenditures contained in the operating budget. So it's what's before us is simply who is to do that exercise. Board of Selectmen currently do it. There's a petition article to say, let's have the Budget Committee do it. That's sanctioned by statute as well. It's for the voters to decide, take it away from the Board of Selectmen, give it to the Budget Committee, or leave it um, with the Board of Selectmen. If you vote yes on 43, you're giving it to the Budget Committee. If you vote no, you leave it with the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. That is exactly what I thought the definition was. And so I wonder why uh, there is a, an effort to move that to a different uh, body. Uh, my second question is, the Board of Selectmen voted four to nothing, four nothing with one abstention uh, to not support this. Uh, are there any shortcomings in there that we should be aware of? What was the reason uh, that was brought up as the reason for not recommending this? I, I, I agree. I don't recommend it either. But uh, what was the Board of Selectmen's? Uh, well, we'll, we'll see if they want to speak to that later. If that's, uh, I don't want to have a dialogue here. I want you to make your remarks. And then I got oh, Mr. Was, Pierce. And I'm going to look. That was my question. Why did you object? Okay. All right. Mr. Thank Pierce. You. And I'll go to the Board of Selectmen, and I think we will have captured the discussion, if there is anybody from the Board who wants to speak to it. But Mr. Pierce, the Board, if anyone, and then we'll see if we're ready to move on to our final article of the day. Mr. Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mike Pierce, 84 Lock Road. One of the reasons why I'm supporting this is because this last year we had found several errors in the default budget when we were doing our budget. It isn't that we were trying to find errors, it's just that we come across those 
when we were looking at this year's proposed budget for 2017 and a default budget, which is supposed to be, in theory, the 2016 budget plus contractual obligations in general terms. So when we come across these errors, we pointed it out to the boys, Board of Selectmen. And the general response was, I won't get into that because that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about we need to have somebody really closely look at the default budget. It should be accurate. It shouldn't be what we think the gas bills will be next year. It shouldn't be what they think Mike Pierce's bill to the town is going to be. What is really an important fact now, okay, that's what should be in the budget. What was in last year's budget plus any contractual obligations. That's pretty straightforward. There's a few other little things in there too, but I'm just saying in general, that's pretty straightforward. If you can read a budget book, which most people can if they put the effort into it, you can read a default budget and compare it to the default, the budget from last year. If it's different, you can say, oh, why is this line different? And that's what we did by default. Default, there you go. I'm sorry to use that word, but we did that because we're scrutinizing the 2017 budget. We wouldn't have noticed it if we hadn't gone into something. The depth we went into looking at the 2017 budget budget. We wouldn't have seen it, but we put a lot of effort into it, and we come across those errors, and we brought to the Board of Selectmen's attention. So I know not only this year, but I'm sure it's happened in the past. There's probably been errors before, but sometimes you don't give everything the attention it might deserve. Have I looked at the default budget every year to make sure it's correct since I'm on the Budget Committee? No, because I was relying on the information given to us by the <clears throat> At the finance department to be accurate and right on point. Now, I'm not finding fault with anybody, I'm just saying they turned out this year to be a little bit of a mess. And I think that encourages me to support this budget. That's why I have my name on the petition, because I think it's about time we get the default budget to be as accurate as we can, rather than any forecast according to some soothsayer that lives in Charleston, South Carolina. We don't care about that. We want to stick right to the facts. And that's why I'm supporting this 100%. And back to the argument of having more than one person looking at things, the amount of time that we spent looking at the budget and the default budget is multiple times times what was spent by the other, the other party in this discussion. Because it was less than a minute from what I recall on the recording on the TV. So I think that we would probably at least go through the motions of doing a much better job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Anyone on the, uh, the board want to speak to Article 43? I think uh, I'll speak for myself. I won't speak for the board. But I think uh, when, when you talk about our not recommended, I think we feel that we've uh, proven the fact over the years that we've, that the board of, not just me, but obviously the boards in the past have done a good job at it, and it's a good safety block. So. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bryan. We all set on Article 43. All those in favor of uh, terminating discussion on Article 43, raise your voter card, down card, any opposed. We are done with Article 43.